Now, what is up my fellow prod coders? Welcome to this video. And today we'll start building our very own first custom hook. So let's go to our uh, code editor. And in the last tutorial, we already did a lot of groundwork. So let's create a new file and we're going to call it use business search. And by the way, for a hook, it is a good convention to uh, always have this use prefix. So I forgot the file extension here. And then some descriptive name, like in our case, it's going to, well, be used for searching for businesses. And that's why this is a pretty good name. Okay, so let's get started. Let's create a function and let's call it use business search. And it's going to take two parameters. And uh, now two things. So we are going to make a call to this um, slash businesses slash uh, search API. And inside here, right, let's make a call here. Here it is. And inside here, we are going to get an object. And what we are interested in is this businesses array because it contains the actual search results. And then we also want this um, total field because this is the total amount of results. So we don't care about the region at the moment. And once we make our request, we need to save the results somewhere. And this is why we need to introduce uh, a little bit of state to our component. So we will say we will use or we will import or use state hook from react and inside here we will say okay businesses yes set businesses equals use state and then empty array so this is going to be the variable in which we store this uh, businesses array that we get back from the yelp api and we also want to store the amount of results so we need a variable for that as well. And we first create the getter and then the setter. And right now, let's just leave this empty. And uh, the third thing that we are going to do, and this might not be super obvious at the moment or like why we do this, but you will soon see why. Uh, we will create a new uh, variable called search params and this is actually going to be an object with two parameters and we're going to pre-initialize uh, it with the parameters we get from here and now you might be wondering okay wait hold on a second like why do we need this i mean we already have it um like here as method parameters so why do we have it in here again you'll soon see why uh, just hang on one second and you'll soon see why. Okay, and the next thing we want to do is we actually want to make an API call. And to make an API call, uh, we need the use effect hook. So every time you want to do something async or like execute some or reach out to the network, you need this use effect hook. And the use effect hook is actually pretty simple. It accepts function as the first argument and inside this function um, you specify the logic that you want to execute now one more thing so say you already search for something say burgers in berlin and then you search for i don't know burgers in new york so what you would then expect is that once you hit enter the current search results are thrown away and you're waiting for the new search results that's why we are going to say we're going to clear this businesses array once we're done. And in here, it's also super important to use the setter. So just uh, clearing everything, like doing something with businesses and then just removing something, like this wouldn't do the job. So every time you change the state, uh, or this state, always use these setters, like never operate on this thing directly, only use this for reading. And 
And now we need to write our actual fetching logic. So we already did a lot of groundwork in the last tutorial. Um, we already created this get method, which allows us to send a get request. And I'm just going to import everything. And I'm going to use this star notation here. Like it's not really needed, but it's just nicer and more speaking. So in order to fetch something, you need, we need to uh, create a new function. And the question that might immediately pop up in your head is, wait, hold on a second. I thought this use effect thing like is used to fetch data. Uh, well, yes, it is used to fetch data, but the function here itself uh, must not be async. So you cannot say async, you cannot pass an async function here. But if you use a, a wait inside, um, inside a function, it must be marked as async. So the only way to use await is to wrap the actual fetching logic into another function and then to execute that function afterwards. It's kind of weird, like I also thought it's kind of weird the first time I saw this. Um, but let's get to our fetching logic. So it's actually pretty easy. So let's just say we will say api.get and remember we want to go for slash businesses slash search. So we'll say slash businesses slash search. And for our search params, for our query params, we're just going to pass this object. And our get method is going to create a query string out of it. And once we made this request, we want the JSON for this request. So we need to uh, say raw data dot JSON, right? Because otherwise we can't work with it. And then we actually already have everything we wanted. So then we can say response.businesses and we're going to put response.businesses inside our variable. So when we're done with fetching data, we will get this um, businesses array, this one, and we're going to put this entire array into our local state. This is what this is why we're calling this setter. And we're also, call, um, we're also going to save the total amount of results. Nice. And now everything we need to do is, oh, I forgot one more thing. So <laughs> we are using uh, a wait and here. So we should wrap all of this inside a try catch block, of course. Yes, and if something goes wrong, I'm just going to uh, console.error it. Okay, so that looks much better. And now everything our hook still needs to do is it needs to return something because after all, we are not just calling the hook for fun. We want to return some data so that our components can show it. And we, of course, need to return the businesses. We need to return the amount of results. We will return the search params and we will return the set search params. And by the way, like if you're using a hook, you typically return an array. And uh, in this array, you return the state variables. So that stuff over here and you typically only return the stuff that you need. So I need to know like what businesses we have. I need to know the total amount of results. Um, I need to kick off a new search with set search params and I need to know what search params it was uh, we used. And there's just one more thing we should do in this hook here, like in this uh, use effect hook, um, there is something called uh, a dependency list. So when you use this hook, then this logic will be executed. But if something changes, so say someone changes the search parameters from the outside, then you, we want the search to be re-executed. And that's why we need to pass, uh, we need to pass a list of variables. And if these variables change, then our logic, then all of this is going to be re-executed. 
And actually, I think let's just put search params here for now. And now you also know like why we have this search, why we have these extra variables here. So say you make a search for the very first time, then well, search params is going to contain burgers in Berlin, whatever. And then someone is going to call this set search params uh, function. And then this object here is going to be updated and our hook will rerun. And this is why we also have this as an additional state variable. Because if we only had this as uh, parameters, well, we already called the function parameters. <laughs> so if we, if we don't have this as a local variable, we couldn't do repeated searches. And this is exactly why we have it. So this hook is going to listen for uh, the term and the location. And every time something changes, it's going to ex re-execute this hook. Okay. Now I know that was quite a lot of information. Um, like using these hooks is a little bit strange at first, but actually it's kind of cool. Like once you get the hang on it. So uh, thank you very much for watching. And please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. And also in the video description down below, I've put a link where you can guys sign up for receiving polls. So if you have a specific idea or if you want to, I don't know, see something specific on a channel, like from time to time, I'm going to send a few emails, emails around and then you can just say whatever you want to see. And if enough people say, I want to see one particular project or I'm interested in one particular subject, I will see what I can do. So again, thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.